Hi, it's been a long time since we've done any reviews for Banggood, but we've got a couple of multimeters here from them. Uh, the first one of them is a low cost unit. This one's just £17.52, but this is a compact sort of all-in-one handheld multimeter. Uh, it's one of those that will automatically select the range based on what's connected to it, so it should be able to detect when we're measuring voltage or when we're trying to measure resistance and that kind of thing. Um, it, to prevent it accidentally selecting the wrong thing when you're measuring current, it does have a separate port for measuring current, so there's no risk there of it accidentally selecting a current range and, and blowing up when you're trying to measure voltage. Uh, but this one also has the non-contact voltage measurement, so we can use the end here to detect if a cable is live and the whole thing is supposed to illuminate brightly when it's detecting a voltage present. So as I said this one's from Banggood £17.52 delivered and it's got a list of the things that it can measure here so uh, AC measurement it's a 6,000 count multimeter and then we can read things like uh, resistance, diode, frequency, continuity and all the other things that you might want to measure with a small multimeter. So we'll look at this one first. Uh, the other item after that is the ET12S. And this one's quite interesting. It's a little bit more expensive coming in at £115 delivered. So quite expensive. But the reason being, this one has an infrared thermometer on it. So this one can actually do uh, low resolution thermal imaging on the touch screen that it's got on the front here. So yeah, £115 delivered for this one. Um, and it does have the ability to transfer some data to the PC as well, but we've got a large TFT on the front of it, and you can select various ranges or um, options by actually pressing on the screen itself. Um, and then we've got some details a bit further down about the thermal measurement. So fairly low resolution. Uh, this one's the ET12S. The 11S is a cheaper version, uh, but it's able to capture at 20 hertz, but very low resolution, 90 by 120 and displaying on the screen as 216 by 288 pixels. First of all, looking at the A2, it's in this nice soft touch sleeve, which is designed to protect it a little bit from impact. It's certainly not a tool that you'd want to use as an electrician, but for a DIY, it might be quite a handy thing to have around. Uh, on the back here, if we undo this screw, um, we actually get access to a USB-C port, which is for charging the internal rechargeable uh, lithium battery quite a nice feature because endlessly replacing AAAs and AA batteries or risking them leaking inside these multimeters is always a bit of a pain so the fact that it's got a rechargeable battery built in that you don't need to worry about is quite a nice feature. To turn it on you hold down the power button until it clicks and then we get a temperature measurement so 25 degrees C and it just says auto at the moment. Now we've got no leads attached so I think it stays like that until we plug something in we can activate the voltage alert by pressing the button at the top here. And at the moment, obviously, we've got no cables around. If I grab a mains cable. So we've got two different modes for the non-contact voltage measurement. We've got low sensitivity and high sensitivity mode. And you do need to get the end very close to the conductor in low sensitivity mode. And also on a cable like this, where we've got live neutral and earth, it matters which way round the cable is. You might be able to see it. If I place it up to the cable here, We've got the live conductor, but as we twist the cable round, it could give the impression that this cable is actually dead, uh, just because we're right next to the earth or the neutral conductor. So that's one of the risks with non-contact voltage measurement. You want to make sure you're actually probing uh, right near to where we might have the live conductor like that. In high sensitivity mode, it should be a bit more sensitive, a little bit more distance. It's starting to detect something about 15 millimetres away, but red when you're right up against it. So that's how the non-contact voltage measurement works. Then we can look at uh, the voltage measurement. So I'll just grab Ian's PDVS2 Mini. So it came with a pair of probes, which I plugged into the bottom here. It also came with a carry case as well. Uh, but it should be able to detect that if I press the probes together, that we're measuring continuity. So it comes up with a beeper. It's not fast enough to beep if you press the probes together quickly, so you wouldn't be able to use this for rapid probing. Uh, but it should be able to uh, detect voltage here. Now we've got this set to 0 0.5 volts. And if I put the probes on there, 
it does not read volts, it reads um, impedance instead for some reason. Now it does have a, I think a 60 millivolt range, so it should be able to pick up this voltage. If I increase this to 1.5 volts, then it does correctly detect 1.5, well 1.51 1 volts. If we drop back down, no, so it doesn't seem to like that low voltage. Let's see at what point it detects we're reading voltage. No. Nope. About 0 0.8 volts or so. That's probably not good enough for most people. Um, so if we increase this, 1.81 volts, let's take it up to 5.8. And then it should auto range after we go past 6 volts. I'm not sure the um, specifications on the Banggood website match what it actually does because it suggests it had multiple ranges there. It should have been able to read millivolts and we're certainly not getting that, at least with the auto select. Let me just check. The instructions aren't that useful actually, so I'll see if there's a, a manual range to force it into volts. So it looks like to manually select the range you need to press the auto select button. Now I've noticed that the buttons aren't the greatest. Sometimes this will false trigger a button nearby, uh, but we've got DC volts there. AC volts, uh, AC volts and then UFC. I'm not sure what that means. I couldn't find anything in the data sheet about that one. Uh, and then we've got resistance. We've got continuity, which incidentally is significantly better in manual range. So that works a lot better. And then we have frequency. So we'll just quickly check the voltage measurement. And incidentally, there is also a backlight, which is quite nice. And that makes it really nice and clear. So let's see if it can read uh, lower voltages this time. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, there we go. So it's just registering that. So we do get the readings right down here. But it doesn't seem to auto range quite as I would have expected. If it's got a 60 millivolt range, you would expect the decimal place to move, uh, which it doesn't seem to do. It just stays in that same position. Now, theoretically, you can put up to uh, 600 volts into this. Um, so there is another position for a decimal place that I can just about see on the LCD. However, I'm not going to probe any mains with this. Uh, I'm not sure I trust the cat rating on it. But uh, I won't go through every range on this. I'm more interested in the thermal imaging multimeter. Uh, but this one's quite a cheap and cheerful device. If you just need something to get you out of trouble or something to carry in the car, something like that, then this might be a handy unit to carry around. So here is the ET12S, and unfortunately this one doesn't come with a carry case, but this one was probably the one that you want to protect a little bit more. It comes with a pair of multimeter probes, and the unit, um, you know, it's quite compact. It's got a little colour TFT on the front here. Four function buttons. On the side here we've got a USB-C charger port. Uh, because once again, this one has a lithium battery inside. This one, very easily replaceable. Uh, there's a little two-pin terminal in there. You can just unplug this 850 milliamp hour battery if you needed to replace it. Uh, but that just replaces in there nice and easily. Now, the plastics aren't the highest quality. In fact, you can see through a little bit, which indicates it's probably quite thin plastic. So definitely built down to a budget. Uh, if we turn it on takes a moment to boot and then it goes straight away into thermal imaging mode and if I put my hand in front of it you can see it has a pretty decent refresh rate and the resolution although the specifications are quite low it does give quite a usable image uh, certainly if you were looking into an electrical panel or something like that you'd be able to immediately see if there's any problems or any conductors getting a bit hot I this one wouldn't really work for PCB debugging because uh, I don't think it's got the, the focal range. You wouldn't be able to zoom up right close and see which component was getting hot. But for electrical work or something a little bit more coarse, maybe looking around in your car or your engine or something like that to see uh, which parts are getting hot, this one will probably do the job. And we get a temperature measurement uh, in the uh, section at the bottom here. So this is the center. And then we've got the lowest and the highest, which you might just be able to see there. So it's saying 20 and 24. And it looks like it dims slightly um, if you don't touch the screen for a few moments. Uh, but yeah, we've got the temperature measurements there. Uh, 
and those update about once a second, maybe a little bit faster. And if we want to change some of the settings, we've got the settings button here. And we've got things like system settings, so IR camera, or if you want it to automatically boot into multimeter mode, that you can press that instead. Uh, we've got the automatic shut off, and obviously the language as well. Backlight and sound. Uh, so we do have a slightly brighter backlight, and uh, let's increase the amount of time before it goes into the reduced brightness mode, and also a little beeper, but that one's not too bad. IR camera. We've got two different color palettes. We can change the units. Then we've got the emissivity setting, 0.95 for most usages, but if you're measuring metal or something like that, then you might want to select one of the other ones. And then we've got basically a refresh rate. Uh, we've got multimeter settings just here. Um, so the default mode, if you're always going to be measuring AC, for example, you might want to set the default to AC, but I always prefer it with DC uh, as the default. Take a moment to come out of that. What's going on? There we go. Uh, storage. So there is some built-in storage which you can use for images and that kind of stuff. And then you can retrieve it with the USB port. And then it's got USB mode here as well. But um, I've not got it connected to the PC, so I don't need that. And then about... Oops. Maybe the screen needs a bit of calibration because it's slightly off here. Uh, we've got the serial number and the version numbers. So that's how you use the unit, and if we want to switch to DMM mode, it's actually got really quite a clear display. It's quite nice, uh, quite a decent refresh rate as well. Let's have a look at how this one works with the PDVS2 Mini. So this one has a display resolution of 0.1 millivolts, so let's see if that actually works. And yeah, there we go. That should be 10.6 millivolts, and that is pretty good. It seems to work quite well. Just losing it a little bit there. So it just changed range there, 3.11. It's pretty close, actually. That's quite impressive, really, for a low-end multimeter. Up to 10 volts. Just going slightly off there, but certainly not too bad at all. Uh, now, this one, uh, as you'll notice, doesn't have a ammeter measurement, so no risk of accidentally uh, shorting out the mains on this one if you were probing around and had it set to the wrong thing. We've got continuity mode here. Let's see how this one behaves. So the beeper appears to be directly tied to a very simple uh, circuit there to measure continuity. It's not latching or anything like that. It takes a moment for a real reading on the display. The beeper is also quite high pitched. Um, some older people might have trouble hearing that one. Uh, but it's certainly not obnoxious like some of the other beepers. Some people might prefer that. Some others may not. Uh, and then we've got um, a graphing menu here now. This has actually got a scale of millivolts, which you might just be able to read on here. Despite the fact that we're reading continuity. Uh, I don't know if we have to be in voltage mode here for it to do anything. So there's a little spanner here, which allows you to select some basic options. 0 0.5 seconds per sample, all the way up to 2 seconds. And we've got continuous sampling. We'll leave it on 0 0.5 seconds. We'll go to voltage. And we'll plug this into the PDVS2 Mini. And then we'll have a look at the graph. So I think we press the play button. And there we go. It's slowly plotting away. So the refresh rate obviously isn't fast enough to fit, pick up very fast transient events. But you can get a feel for what's going on there. And we'll just see what happens when it gets to the end of the graph, whether it auto-scales. 
And yeah, you can see it auto scaled there so that you can keep all of your data on there. So yeah, that might be quite useful if you're looking for a bit of trend data, just to try and see what's going on. As I said, it's not an oscilloscope, so you're not going to be able to see everything in high resolution, but it'll give you an idea of what's going on over a period of time. Here's what the unit looks like inside. We've got matte black PCB with the Enig plating, version 1.9 from April of this year, fieldtech.net. And obviously we've got the touchscreen LCD here, the resistor ladder and that kind of stuff near the banana jacks and then on this side as you can see unfortunately they've lasered everything off so you can't really see what's going on here uh, we can make some guesses we do have some protection here so we've got a ptc and a, a relay which does seem to disconnect these banana jacks under certain certain circumstances i hear it clicking sometimes um but no fuse at all on the two inputs here um now from what i can tell this looks to be some kind of off-the-shelf dmm chip it's connected to the banana jacks and it goes through these optocouplers and there's an isolated DC to DC converter here. So they seem to have isolated the DMM at this point here through there and then there's a digital interface to this apps processor. Um, there's some flash and uh, something else going on here. A buzzer, a whole bunch of voltage regulators all the way around the outside. Quite a few there. Some of them associated with battery charging. Uh, obviously some with getting the isolated supply to here. Uh, but yeah, quite a few voltage regulators all the way around the outside. That was the connector to the battery. There is a fuse for the USB connector, so uh, that's that. Uh, now, I think I did just catch a glimpse of some marking that might not have quite got fully lasered off. Uh, does that say artery on the microcontroller? Might just be able to make something out there. Not a brand I'm familiar with, but I think it's probably just going to be a generic... STM32 processor. It's driving the TFT, interfacing with this thermal camera module with a bit of flash and with a beeper, so it doesn't need to be doing anything uh, too exotic. I imagine any kind of reasonably powerful processor will be able to do the image capture off the IR camera and display it on the screen. Looks like we've got a shutter on the camera, which I didn't notice before. Um, so that's controlled by these on this flexi here, and then the image uh, data is coming off onto this connector here. But I'm not fully up to date on my thermal cameras. BCA5 is the only marking that's on this thermal camera, but it's stood off from the PCB uh, and then has a little viewfinder on the back of the multimeter. So that's what it looks like inside. So as I said before, if you're interested in taking a look at these, I'll put the links in the description down below. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.